motion. And a linear motion, we talked of distance. We've also talked about displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. Then we looked at graph of motion, where we looked at um, displacement time graph, displacement or distance time graph. Yeah. Then, then we also looked at velocity time graph, and we have we have also considered acceleration time graph to to quickly revise one or two before we look at our questions. If you have a displacement time graph and it's like this, this is displacement. The horizontal is a time axis. Horizontal is a time axis. T. And the motion is like this. Take note that here, here, the graph, which is a straight line, makes an angle of zero degree with a time axis. So the graph, which is this straight line or the motion, makes an angle of zero degree with a time axis. Or, so graph, graph makes an angle of zero degrees with the time, with time axis, with the time axis. Or, or, we can also say that. Hey, more on my computer. Hey, Eric, you mute yourself. Please, when you join, mute yourself, okay? So, or, or the graph, graph is parallel to the time axis, parallel to the time axis. So these are two different ways to describe this motion. Either the graph makes an, or the motion makes an angle of zero degree with the time axis, or graph is parallel to the time axis. What kind of motion is this? Yes, yeah, it's, it's an open question. Anybody can answer. What kind of motion is this? If you have a displacement time graph and then the motion is spiral to the time axis, what kind of motion is this? Any, any contribution? Yes, that could, that could go ahead. It means that the motion is constant. Um, motion is constant. That can explain further. What do you actually mean? What do you mean by motion is constant? <laughs> Pamela, let, please, let me mute everybody and only allow you to no physics. Okay, that will come in. Please, the, the distance does not change. Okay, that is the opinion of Darko. Let's have other views. 
place is a displacement time graph. So if you have the motion being parallel to the time axis, what does it mean? What does the motion imply? Yes, anybody, quick one. Okay, uh, Paulette. This means the stationary. What is stationary? The body is stationary. There is no Good. movement. This is a graph of a stationary body. Thank you. So, Dako, it means body is stationary or at rest. Body is at rest. So this is no movement graph. Dak, are you okay? Then yes, the same please. displace displacement time graph. The same displacement time graph. If we have the motion or the graph. Inclined, inclined to the time axis. This is an inclination. This is an angle theta. And this angle is constant. Okay, the same displacement time graph. The motion is inclined to the time axis. So graph is inclined. Okay, meaning it makes a, a certain angle theta with the time axis. And this angle of inclination theta is constant. The value is the same. It doesn't change. What kind of motion is this? Yes, what kind of motion is this? Cadmiel, sorry to disappoint you. It will be constant acceleration. Please, it's a displacement time graph. So check what kind of motion, okay, the body is embarking on. Yes, what kind of, what kind of motion is this? Views. Yes. Oh, let me have your views. Paulette again. If you have a displacement time graph and the motion is inclined to the time axis, what does the motion mean? What does it mean? So, please, I think it means it has a constant. Constant, constant what? Please, a constant, sorry, a constant speed. Okay, that way your hand is up too. So your means hand... the body is. This means yeah. that the body is accelerating. The body is accelerating. Accelerating. Okay, Irene, your hand is up. Irene. Um, please, it means that the body has a constant velocity. Okay, thank you. So, Dako, I, I'm, I'm stressing on this. If you are given this kind of question, look at the kind of axis. Is it displacement time graph or velocity time graph? Okay, over here, I told you last time that if you pick any two points on the line, and then find the slope. The slope of a displacement time graph is equal to the what? Irene, the slope of a displacement time graph is equal to? The change in y over change in x. That's what, but what does the change in y and change in x gives you? The slope of a displacement time graph is equal to the? Oh, we've done the this. slope of the the slope of the um, velocity this. is equal to the velocity. The slope of a displacement time graph would give you.
velocity. And this velocity is constant. If you take any two points, any different two points, this and this, to find the slope, you get the same value. And because the value is the same along the straight line, okay, we say that this is uniform or constant velocity graph. Uniform velocity motion because the velocity which is equal to the slope is the same along the straight line so please take note for 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 a displacement time graph the slope would is equal to the velocity for a distance time graph the slope is equal to the speed so that take note and the the slope, which is the velocity, is constant because this angle is also constant. Please, is that okay? Then let's yes, look at please. it. Let's look at it for velocity time graph. And that one, this time we are talking about velocity against time. Earlier, we had distance or displacement against time. If you have a velocity time graph and the motion is like this, what does it mean? If you have a velocity time graph and the motion or the graph is like this, what does it mean? Yes. Constant oh, velocity. This is what? This is, yes, constant velocity. Constant velocity motion. What can you say about the acceleration of this? What can you say about the acceleration of this motion? Yes. Who is answering? What can you say about the acceleration of this? Yes, Irene. Please, I think um, there will be no acceleration. So acceleration is zero. Zero, yes. Acceleration is zero. Now, the same velocity time graph. V against T. This time, the motion is inclined to the time axis. The motion is inclined to the time axis. What kind of motion is this? What does it what does the motion say? Yes. Leonard, we are just reviewing what we've done. Okay. We haven't even started, but we are reviewing what we've done. What kind of motion is this? Quick one, quick response. Oh, Darko, Paulette, Irene. I'll start mentioning him. Benedicta, you are here. Elizabeth, er uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for you. What kind of motion is this? Irene. Okay, over here, it's similar to this kind of motion. Okay. Over here, when you find a slope, the slope is uniform. When you pick any two points to find a slope, you get the same value because 
this angle is the same. The angle is constant. Okay? And so, when you pick any two points on a straight line, and then you determine the slope, the slope of a velocity time graph, which is equal to the change in velocity, we mean change in the vertical. The vertical is this, delta V over the change in the horizontal, which is delta T. The slope of a velocity time graph is equal to the what? What will the slope of this give you? Yes. Acceleration. 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 And the acceleration is uniform uniform along the straight line or this angle of inclination doesn't change it's constant or uniform the reason for which the acceleration is also uniform that is why here when the slope is equal to zero we say that the acceleration is also equal to zero okay so please when you are given a graph to interpret you must look at what it is? Is it, ask yourself, is it displacement time graph or velocity time graph before you answer? Are we okay? Class, are we okay? Yes, Paulette, your hand is up. Certainly, in our previous lesson, you were saying something about the, the, the motion, the, the, the motion you just drew, that was a variable, Acceleration. This I want you to elaborate. I was talking about when you have a non-uniform velocity motion, because because we are we are just reviewing what you've done before. I didn't want to touch on everything, but that variable thing is under when you have a non-uniform velocity or displacement motion or non-uniform velocity. Okay, thank you. Mm. Right, Paulette, once, once we have the videos, I, I would say that you, you look at the video, okay? And then when you have concerns, okay. you let me know to address it so we can move on. Yes, yes please, thank you. Okay, all right, let's look at the exercise I, I gave you earlier, I think I've given you three different work sets. Today's exercise, those five questions I gave. Question one, if an object is moving with a constant speed, listen to the question. If an object is moving with a constant speed, then its distance time graph will be a straight line A along the time axis, B along distance axis, C parallel to the time axis, and D, inclined to the time axis. I take it again. If an object is moving with constant speed, listen to that, uh, constant speed. If an object is moving with a constant speed, then its displacement distance time graph, its distance time graph, will be a straight line A along the time axis, B along the distance axis, C parallel to time axis, and D inclined to the time axis. Yes. Let me see who answers this. We've just looked at an application of this. Uh -huh. Josiah. Uh, I think it will be uh, parallel to the time axis. 
Okay, so let's see. Let's see what Josiah is saying. Daniel, he says, you mean C, we'll look at it. So if an object is moving with a constant speed, then its distance time graph. Josiah is saying, must be parallel to the time axis. Josiah and cadmium. So this is distance, which is the same as displacement. This is distance. This is time. And if it is moving with constant speed, then you have said that uh, the straight line must be parallel to the time axis. This is the time axis. And anything parallel to it is this. Josiah and Pamela, this is, this is what you are saying. Class, what do you have to say about this? What do you think? That if the body is moving at a constant speed, then yeah. the straight line must be parallel to the time margin. Is that correct? Yes, I... yeah. no. Okay, somebody is saying yes, somebody yeah, no. is saying no. 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 But but what is this? What is this kind of motion? If you are saying no, what is this kind of motion? Yes, the answer is a no answer. It's no, because for, for a distance or displacement time graph, for a distance or displacement time graph, if the motion is parallel to the time axis, it means Body is stationary. Body is stationary or at rest. Or at rest. This is what this means. So Josiah and Cadmio, this is a, a graph of a stationary body. For constant speed. For constant speed, Distance. Pardon? Isaac, your line is breaking. What are you saying? Sir, please, it must be inclined. It, uh, yes, it must be inclined Sir, please, to them. Right. You are right. You are right. For constant speed, the graph must be inclined to the time axis. This is how it must be. This is constant speed. Please, class, are you okay? Are we fine? Yes, sir. yes, please. So pay attention. This is sometimes technical, but it's also very easy to understand. Question two. Question two. Josiah. Are you there? Yes. Pay attention to question two. You would answer question two and listen. A straight line. How you do? Josiah, a straight line parallel to the time axis on a distance time graph tells that the, the object is a straight line parallel to the time axis on a distance time graph tells that the object is, yes, it's stationary. It's stationary. It's stationary. Exactly. Okay. When the straight line is parallel to the time axis for a distance time graph or displacement time graph, the body is stationary or at rest. All right. Question three. This question three, so far, none of you managed to get it all. <laughs> Let me draw. It's a velocity time graph. B 
with the first second time. And we have this point as 15, then we have zero, then we have 10. Now the question is that the speed time graph, speed or velocity time graph, okay, of a car is shown below. Which of the following statement is true? A, car has an acceleration of 1.5 meter per second squared. B, car has a constant speed of 7.5 meter per second. C, distance traveled by car is 75. And D, average speed of the car is 7.5 meter per second. Yes. Which of the four options is correct? Hey, Jesse, uh, you... once your microphone is on, Jesse, contribute, speak. Which of the following statement is true? Yes. Um, sir, I picked C. C. Distance traveled okay. by a car is 75. Anyway, Jesse is going for C. Let's see. Somebody is also thinking A. Okay, Leonard. Uh -huh. The ladies, what do you think? The ladies, what do you think? C. Pardon? C. C. Distance traveled by a car is 75 meters. Anyway, what do I also say? In fact, A is out. <laughs> Irene, A is out <laughs> because you see, this is this is a, a decelerating body, and so we expect the acceleration to be negative. But once we are told it is has an acceleration of positive 1.5, then it's over the bar. Please. Irene, are you okay as to why A is out? It's a negative graph. And so this must be a deceleration. When we calculate, let's calculate for the slope of this graph. So the slope, which is equal to the acceleration, is equal to the change in the vertical, which is, okay, the final speed. The initial speed is 15. The final speed is zero. So 0 minus 15 all over. The final time is 10. Initial time, 0. So we have 15, negative 15 on 10. And this is negative 1.5 meter per second squared. So once we are told it has an acceleration of positive, that is out. It's a bait to, uh, to, to, to catch you. <laughs> Is that okay? Then B. The B part. Car has a constant speed of 7.5. No. This, is, this cannot have a constant speed. Because this is not distance time graph. It's a velocity time graph. It must rather have a constant acceleration. It cannot have a constant speed. So B is also out. C, distance traveled by a car is 75 meter. If you have a speed time graph or velocity time graph, the area under the graph is equal to the total distance traveled. So please take note of this point line. 
for a speed or velocity time graph the area the area area spelled in capital letters the area under the graph the graph is equal to the total distance traveled or covered. So please, for a velocity time graph, if you are looking for the total distance traveled, it is equal to the area under the graph. Class, is that okay? Yes. Please. Are you there? Okay. So let's calculate for this area under the graph, which is equal to distance travel or coverage. The area is a triangle. So area of a triangle, which is half base times height. This is equal to, what is the base? The base is 10. The height is 15. So we have 75 meters to be the total distance travel. So option, the option C is correct. Now, D is also correct. D is also correct. Why is D correct? If you have a velocity time graph, the average speed or average velocity for a velocity time graph, the average speed slash velocity is equal to total distance traveled over total time taking. So if I want to calculate for the average speed, the average speed is equal to total distance, seven, uh, 75 meters over total time taken, 10. So this is equal to 7.5 meter per second. Okay. So the average speed is, now there's another way of finding average speed in an velocity time graph. And this is the same average speed. It's also equal to Initial velocity u plus final velocity v over 2. Initial velocity average. We have two velocities, initial one and then a final one. So if you are looking for the average of it, the sum of the two velocities divided by 2. So initial velocity u plus final velocity v, all divided by two. And what is the initial velocity? The body, the motion starts from rest. A car, okay, the motion starts from rest. So the initial velocity is zero. So zero plus a final velocity of 15 divided by two would give us 7.5. So, The correct answers are C and D. C and D. 
class, are we okay? Yes, please. We are we are going to look at after this, we will be looking at equations of motion. So you understand this average yes, velocity please. thing again. All right. As for question four, a lot of you had it right. Question four. Question four, a train is moving at a speed of 36 kilometer per hour. Okay. A train is moving at a speed of 36 kilometer per hour. Its speed in meter per second is, let me clean the board. As for this, I'm sure because you have done measurement, in school, a lot of you were able to apply measurements to this. So don't forget I said the area under a velocity time graph is equal to the total distance traveled or covered. The area under a velocity time graph is equal to the total distance traveled. And then the slope of a velocity time graph, the slope of a velocity time graph is equal to, is equal to the what? Plus, the slope of a velocity time graph is equal to, who oh, finish it the for me? Acceleration. The acceleration, good. Acceleration. Okay, so a train is moving at a speed of 36. The speed is 36 kilometer per hour. What is the speed in meter per second? All right, so 36 kilometer per, the per means over one hour. So I'm looking for the speed in meter per second. So let's change the distance which is the numerator, two meter, and then the time, which is the denominator, two seconds. So 36, I'm using prefaces. Kilo means time to the power three meter over. So I'm, I've only substituted the value of the preface kilo. This is it. Having um living the or still having the meter. One hour is equal to three thousand six hundred seconds. This is something you must have at your fingertips. Okay, one minute is equal to sixty seconds. One hour is equal to three thousand six hundred seconds. You must have this at your fingertips. So. I have 36 zero, zero, times 10. This is 36,000, but it's the same as this. Divided by 36, 3,600 times one second. And this and this. So I have 10 meter per second to be the speed. As for this, a lot of you had had this question right. Question five. Please, any question here? I guess no question. Oh, a car starts no, from a car starts from rest. Please, in physics 
or in motion, linear motion, you must pay attention to these phrases. Start from rest. Start from rest. Comes to rest. Or comes to a stop. These are these are phrases that mean that the initial and the final velocity is zero. If you are told a car or a body starts from rest, it means the initial velocity u is equal to zero. Comes to a stop, it means the final velocity v is zero. comes to rest, comes to a stop. These are all phrases which suggest that the final velocity is zero. So in motion, linear motion, please pay attention to these phrases. That is the meaning of them. So a car starts from rest, starts from rest. meaning initial velocity u is zero. It acquires a speed of 25 meter per second. So look at the builder, initial velocity zero, then acquires a speed of 25 meter per second after 20 seconds. So it means that after starting from rest, let me clean. This and bring after starting from rest, it's increased speed. And so the final velocity is now 25 meter per second. And this change in speed occurs within a time interval of 20 seconds. That is what it means. Please. I saw some of you using the question demands I calculate for the distance moved. I saw some of you using this. V is equal to S over T. And you then make S the subject. S therefore is equal to V T. And so if S is equal to VT, then 25 times 20, giving us 500 meter. And this is wrong. Can somebody tell me why this approach is wrong? This method of calculation. Can somebody tell me why it is wrong? Yes. Whoever gets it right wins a traveling visa to Dubai after COVID. <laughs> uh -huh. Bolette, are you there? Irene. Daku. Can somebody share with us why this is wrong? Well, let's, I'm listening. Okay. This is wrong because you see. Sir, please, from what I think. Yes, go ahead. Sir, please, from what I think, uh, from what I know, I think that there is a formula for the distance, which is. S is equal to ut plus half at squared. So, so I think when you substitute it, it is wrong. No, we'll come there. But there's a reason why this is wrong. You see, this is wrong because if you use velocity or speed, 
is equal to distance over time. Then you are assuming that the body has a uniform speed from start to finish. Its speed is the same from beginning to end. If the body moves at a constant speed or uniform speed, you can use this. But look at what we have. The body starts from rest. Its initial velocity is zero. And then after 20 seconds, attains a velocity of 25 meter per second. So we realize that the body speed is increasing, isn't it? Class, is that correct? Yes. The body speed is increasing with time. So the speed is not constant. If the speed is not constant, then you can use this. There is a way to, to go about it. And here, because the speed is changing, it means that the body is accelerating. Don't forget, I told you that acceleration has to do with increasing speed with time. Okay, so over here, the body is accelerating. If the body is accelerating, then you must include or factor its acceleration. That is why when you use this, you are wrong. Here you are assuming that the speed is constant or uniform throughout from start to finish. Is that okay? So we will look at graph equations of motion where you understand what I'm saying better. So how do I do this? Let's plot the velocity against time. Let's plot the velocity, velocity time graph of this motion. So velocity and then time. The body starts from rest, meaning it starts from initial velocity of zero. Then after a time interval of 20 seconds, attains a velocity of this is a time of 20, attains a velocity of 25. This is the velocity time graph of the motion. Now, I just told you that the area under a velocity time graph equals the total distance traveled. So if I want the total distance traveled, this is it. It's this area under the graph or between the, the graph and then the time axis is what we are looking at. And it's a triangle. So distance covered. This is equal to half times the base times its height. So half times the base is 20 and the height is 25. So we have 250 meters to be the total distance covered. Yeah, Trey. Please, can you go over why we can use the first one? Yeah, I hear. I'll go over. So the total distance traveled is 250 meter per, uh, 250 meters. Yeah, you cannot use this. Speed. I give you a distance of 100 meters. And then so this is the distance. Then the time. Take, let's assume Ya uses five minutes 
to complete 100 meters. Hey, yeah, that is serious for you. <laughs> let's, let's assume two. <laughs> so five minutes is equal to 100 and uh, two minutes is equal to 120 seconds. If I want to determine the yeah, speed, speed is equal to distance covered or travel over time. So yeah, speed will be the distance she covered, which is 100 meters, divided by the time used, one, 120 seconds. And this will be equal to 0. Point, yes, what is 10 divided by 12? What's 10 divided by 12? 0. Point what? Just give me the answer in 2DP. 0. Point, Oh. 0.82. Okay. So yeah, with this, we are looking at you starting the journey and then ending with that constant speed. Your speed, which is 0.83 from start to finish, is the same, constant. Okay. So we can determine the speed of yours when the speed, okay, is the constant. But look at this situation. You were told that the body starts from rest, where the initial velocity u is zero. After time, t is equal to 20 seconds. The body's final velocity is 25 meter per second. Yeah, is the velocity of the body constant? Yeah. Hello. The velocity of the body is not constant. If it is not constant, then you can use this to find the, the distance covered. This over here, it means the body is accelerating. Okay. And so you must factor acceleration into uh, the formula in order to determine the total distance covered. That is why you can't use this. Please, any more question? All right. Let's also look at that question I gave you on displacement time graph. Is it, I think, velocity time graph? It's on the platform. So I'm retrieving it and then would we'll post it onto our platform. So I'm retrieving the question and then we'll forward it to the group. Good, so I've done so. Let me clean the board quickly. Okay, so I'm going to give you the graph.
Let me change that marker. So we have a velocity time graph. This is three. Then we have from this is four drops down to this is ten. Ten. This is one point five, negative one point five. So that's a graph. That's a graph. Now, question one. So this velocity time graph shows a body moving at constant velocity for four seconds. The body moves at constant velocity for four seconds and then decelerating uniformly for six seconds. Find I, the initial velocity U, I, I, the final velocity V, then I, 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 the acceleration A during the last six seconds. And then IV, IV, the distance from its starting point, from its starting point. Then, sorry, IV, the displacement from its starting point. And then V, the distance, total distance traveled by the by the body. Yes, how do we determine I, the initial velocity? Plus, how do we determine the initial velocity U? Yes, anybody to help us? Please, let's not waste time. Let's not waste time. If you are, uh -huh, Henry. Uh, negative 1.5. Initial velocity. Initial velocity. Henry, look at it again. Henry, look at it again for me. Yes. Uh, if your hand is up, go ahead. Three. Three meters per second. Yes. It's three meters per second. So, Henry, the motion starts from this point. Then, decelerate uniformly. Okay, comes to a stop. And then, increases velocity at the opposite end. So, the initial velocity must be read from here. There's a starting point of the motion. Why is it the starting point? Because... Time always starts from zero. Okay. So from the time axis, we could see that the time will be increasing from here, from zero. So if when time is zero, this is the velocity. When time is four, the velocity is the same. When time is 10, the velocity, the final velocity. Okay. So Henry. U, initial velocity U is equal to three meter per second. Please, are you okay? 
All right. Yes, sir. Yes. No, no, do mute yourself. If you haven't muted, do so. Then the final velocity. Jesse? Jesse? Hello, Jesse? Um, yes, sir. What's, what's the problem? No, sir, I was having a bit of a network challenge, so I didn't really hear the question. We are looking at the first question. We have to determine the initial velocity u. And we are saying the initial right. velocity is equal to three meter per second. Are you okay? This, this is because, you see, we are looking at increasing time. As time increases, what happens? So at, at the time t is equal to zero, the velocity is three, meaning this is the initial velocity. And as time increases, the velocity remains constant and drops to zero and increases at the opposite end. All right. What is the final velocity? Yes, what is the final velocity? What is the final velocity, Adam? Okay, Henry, Henry, go ahead. Negative 1.5 meters per second. Exactly, because the, the maximum time is 10. So at time t is equal to 10 seconds, what is the velocity, this is it? So v is equal to negative 1.5 meter per second. Juliana, mute yourself. Juliana, say. Okay. I, I, the acceleration A during the, the last six seconds. The acceleration A during the last six seconds. Meaning, we are looking at acceleration from four to 10, because there's a time interval of um, six seconds. Now at four seconds, the velocity is three. Then over here, we have a uniform uh, acceleration. Of course, it's a deceleration. Okay, so at, at time, at t is equal to 4, velocity is 3. Let me use u. Initial velocity is 3 meter per second. Then at time, t is equal to 10 seconds, the velocity, the final velocity is minus 1.5 meter per second. And when you look at the graph, it's, a, it's inclined to the time axis, okay, at a constant angle. So the acceleration is a velocity time graph. The slope is equal to the acceleration. So you realize that this acceleration is the same throughout. So this is, over here, we have uniform acceleration. So let's find the slope. The slope of a velocity time graph would be equal to change in velocity over the change in time. Okay. Now, what is the, what is the final velocity? Please, for acceleration A, then it is always final velocity minus initial velocity all divided by time. Okay. So what is the final velocity? The final velocity is minus 1.5. Minus, what is the initial velocity? Three. Divided by, the time interval is six, or 10 minus four. Therefore, we have minus 4.5 over six. And what is minus 4.5 over six? Yes. 
this is minus 0 0.75 meter per second squared. Henry. Henry. Oh, Henry, ask your question. Your hand is up. So I was about to answer the question. Oh, oh, okay. I can also solve the same question using another approach. And this is it. If I take this triangle, the slope of this triangle is the same as the slope of this triangle. Because, you see, this line is the same throughout. So this slope is the same. So I can find the slope of this triangle and then find the slope of this and then equate them. And it must give me a time. When I get a time, it must give me the time at this point. This time T, which I don't know. I think so. So let's find the slope of this triangle. Maybe let's A, let's label it as triangle A, B, C, D, E. So considering triangle A, B, C. Juliana. Please, um, is the answer the same as deceleration? Come again. Please, the answer, the acceleration. Uh -huh. Is it the same as deceleration? Oh, a negative acceleration is known as a deceleration or retardation. A negative acceleration is known as a, a deceleration or retardation. Are you okay? So the slope of ABC is equal to the change in vertical. What is the vertical? The change in vertical. The final is zero minus initial three over, I don't know this time. So T. So the time is t minus 4. This time is known 4, but I don't know this. So all that I'm saying is that let this time be equal to t. So the slope of triangle ABC is 0 minus 3 over t over 4. Then let's find the slope of this one too. Slope of Triangle C, D, E. And this is opposite. Okay, changing this part. And this part is minus 1.5. The final is, the final velocity is minus 1.5. Minus the initial velocity is zero. Over the change in time, this time is 10 minus this time, which is T. Okay, so over here, I have minus three over T minus four. Over here, I have minus 1.5 over 10 minus T. Since they have the same slope, I can equate this to this and find t. So when I equate minus three over t minus four to be equal to this slope, minus 1.5 over 10 minus t, this and this will cancel. When, I, when we cross multiply, we have three times 10 minus t is equal to 1.5 times t minus 4. 
if you divide through, if we divide through by 1.5, okay, please, over here, it is mathematics, so pay attention. What is 3 divided by 1.5? 3 divided by 1.5. Yes, go ahead. Caleb, go ahead. Wait. Please, two. So, two. two. So, we have two. It's equal to this and this for cancel T minus four. Class, help me find the value of T. At this point, help me find the value of T. Over here is purely mathematics. So help me find the value of T. Yes, what have you had for T? What have you um, had for T? T is equal to 24. Are you sure? 24. Or... T is equal to 8. Yes, T is 8. T is equal to 8. Sorry, 8. It's 8. T is 8. Okay. It's what is 8. Want... Okay, so 20. Minus 2t is equal to t minus 4. When you group like terms, you have 3t. 3t three is equal to 24. Therefore, t is equal to 24 on 3, which is 8 seconds. So what it means is that this time over here is equal to 8. OK. The time, the time at this point is equal to eight. So if t is, if t is eight, then when I find the slope of a, b, c, it must be the same as slope of c, d, e. Once we have the time, we have this time as eight. Help me determine the slope of a, b, c. Somebody must also determine the slope of C, D, E, this triangle. And let's compare. I want everybody to do something. Help me determine the slope of A, B, C. And then another group must also determine the slope of C, D, E. And let's compare. What have you had for slope of A, B, C? Less than the noise decibels at the University of Ghana Stadium in Accra, Ghana. Yes. <laughs> What's the slope of A, B, C? <laughs> Elizabeth. Your microphone yes, is please. on. What did you get for the slope of A, B, C? Yes, I got 0 0.75 meter per second square. Did you get positive or negative? Please, negative, sorry. Exactly. So you realize that the slope of A, B, C is the same as what we had calculated for earlier. What did you get for the slope of C, D, E? C, D, E. Yes, slope of C, D, E. Okay. 
Oh, nobody calculated for for that. Please. Uh -huh, Lizzie. This I got negative zero point seven five meter per second square. Exactly. Again. Exactly. So what I'm trying to tell you is that because this line is uniform, okay, whether you pick it from this or this, or you combine everything, you get the same thing as a slope, telling you that from this point to this point, the acceleration is the same. That is all that. So you can solve it in parts, just as we've done, or pick it as one and then do it. All right. Then the next question. Ivy, find the displacement from its, the displacement of the body from its starting point. I'm coming. Give me a second to pick this call. I'm coming here. All right. So the displacement of the body from a starting point. Okay. Now, please, class, pay attention to this part, another important point. This is a velocity time graph. The question demands for displacement. I'm going to give you a displacement time graph and what you see in displacement. So if we have a displacement time graph, or distance time graph. If the displacement of the body is in one direction, look at the question of Jill. Jill moved from his house, sorry, her house, and then visited a friend, covering a distance of, I think, what was Jill's distance? What was Jill's distance? Oh, the, the Jill question. Jill moving from her house, visiting a friend. What distance did Jill initially cover? Class, are you there? Paulette, that one twenty meters. Contribute, please. Yes, one twenty. So, you see, let's quickly combine that question. For the question asks of distance time graph and displacement time graph. For distance time graph class, we are not interested in direction. For distance, so. She covered a distance of 120 seconds, uh, 120 meters within 60 seconds. So for 60 seconds, Jill moved from her house, went to a friend's house. The friend's house covered a distance of 120 seconds. So this is one, two, zero, 120 minutes. Then, okay, she stopped for a while. What was what was the time taking for the conversation between Jill and then the friend? What time was taken? Sixty seconds. No, is it fifty? No, it wasn't fifty. Please, 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. So, seconds. when she got to the friend's house, they, they chatted for 30 seconds. There, Jill wasn't moving. And so, no distance was covered. And so, after 30 seconds, 
So 60 plus 30, 90. There was no motion. So the graph is zero gradient. The slope is zero, meaning at this time, 30 seconds, there was no movement. Then after starting for 30 seconds, Jill returned home. You see, for this place, distance time graph, we are only interested in the distance covered. Going and coming back, the total distance. So after chatting with her for 30 seconds and then returning back home, when Jill finally gets home, she will cover the same distance as she took to her friend's house. So the same distance of 120 seconds will be covered. So 120 plus another 120 meters, giving us 240. Okay. And this took place within, I think, 40 seconds. So 90 plus the 40, 130. So 130, Jill, Jill then covered a distance of 120 meters again. And here, as I said, we are not interested in coming back the direction. No. All that we are interested in distance time graph is that, that the total distance covered for distance time graph. Plus, are you okay? Now, let's look at displacement. The displacement time graph of the same question. So as, so Jill went to her friend's house, covered a distance of 120. So this is 60. So the initial part is the same as what we saw in distance time graph. And this slope, is a, const a uniform or constant okay velocity this is a this is a constant velocity okay which we can calculate that is if you want to find um when she moved from her house to her friend's house that this gradient is the constant or uniform velocity which is equal to the this change in the vertical over the change in the horizontal then, when she got there, okay, she spoke with her friend for 30 seconds. So, 60 plus 30, 90. There, because she was stationary, no motion. So, zero gradient. Then, after, after the 30 seconds, Okay, Leonard, I'll, 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 I'll look at it. Then after 30 seconds, she returned home. Please, for displacement, we are interested in the position of the body with respect to the starting point. This is the starting point. So after 40 seconds, she returned home. So if she is returning home, then the total distance, okay, from where? She is finally at with respect to her beginning point must be zero. So for displacement, we are interested in direction. So if I have covered 120 seconds and I'm coming back earlier, the direction was in this direction. Okay, moving away from the starting point, origin O. Then after chatting with a friend, she's returning home, returning to this point where where displacement is zero, okay? So there will be a reduction of um, her, the distance covered in that direction with respect to the origin. So for displacement, we are interested in the position of the body with respect to O. So this is how it will fall, okay? In this direction, towards a starting point. So for displacement time graph, this is how it will be. 
For, for distance time graph, we are only interested in the total distance covered. Plus, is that okay? Yes, please. Yes, I remember I, I solved this and then sent to you via the video. All right. Then let's apply this to our question. So in, in IV, we have to find the displacement from its starting point. What is the displacement means position? What is the position of the body from its starting point? With respect to its starting point, which is here. How do we do this? Okay, so here find the um the graph, find the total okay area of the graph above above the time axis, and then find the total area below the time axis, and then subtract the lesser one from the smaller one. You see, because for displacement, we are interested in direction. This is position at the negative side. So find this area at the negative side or below the time axis. Find the total area above the time axis and subtract the negative one from the positive one. That gives you the displacement. And I'm saying this because displacement, we are looking at position with respect to the starting point. So get the total, okay, area under the graph, I don't, uh, above and below. And then this is negative, this is positive. Subtract it from the positive and that would give you the, the, the displacement. Don't forget, if this is not there, if, if the second part is not there, what do you think? will be the value of the displacement. If we don't have this part of from eight to 10, this is not there. What do you think will be the displacement of the body? Plus, if, if we don't have this and it only ends here, what do you think will be the displacement of the body? Anybody? Okay. So if this is not there, the displacement will just be what is above here. Okay. Meaning we are only looking at movement along the positive y axis. We don't have the negative. So the area over here would be the, the displacement. But once we have a positive area and a negative area, Find this positive area, find the negative area, subtract the negative from the positive. The difference is the displacement. So please do it for me. Let's see how you can put ideas together. This area above is a trapezium. This is a triangle. Calculate for the area here. Determine the area here and let's see. Start work in about, I think, I think two minutes you must do this. Two minutes, and let's respect the time. Find the area above, find the area below. Okay, those of you who are true, what have you had for the area above, above the time axis?
Yes. Yes. Area above the time. Okay, Caleb. Caleb, go ahead. Hey, okay, Dino, you go ahead. If you are ready, share with us what we will have. Hey, everybody is quiet. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please. And what did you get for the area above yeah. the time axis? So, please, I have 21. Okay, let's see. Let's confirm. This is a trapezium. So, area of a trapezium half A plus B times H. So, this is what is A? A is 4. A is 4 plus B. B is 8 times H. H is 3. So, half. So, if we say 18, rather. Yes. Half by 12 by 3. That's a 6. So 18. So the area above the time axis, 18 plus 18. Then area below the time axis. What did you get for the area below the time axis? Yes. What did you get for the area below the time axis? Hey, Paulette, I Irene and Co. You, why are you so quiet? Elizabeth, Vera, Laura, and all the names. <laughs> this is a triangle. So area of the triangle, how base times height. So half by the base. The base is two. Well, this is eight. This is 10. By the height is 1.5. OK. We know it's negative, but we, we are interested in the magnitude, so 1.5. So the area below the. The graph is 1.5 meters. And this is below the graph negative. So therefore, displacement of the body is equal to 18 minus 1.5, which is 16.5 meters. That's a displacement of the body. That's a displacement. Now the total distance, which is the last question. The total distance, as for, to, as for distance, we are not interested in direction. We are only interested in the magnitude of the distance covered. So what do you think will be the total distance, yes? Somebody to share that with us. Total distance. For total distance, we are not interested in directions. We are only interested in the magnitude of the distance covered. So what do you think will be the total distance covered here? Yes. Yes. For light. Pali. Delali. Oh, Irene. Oh, they've gone to sleep. 
Jojo. Okay. Yes, anybody to share with us what the total distance will be? Anybody? Caleb. 16.5. Sixteen point five from from the camp of who? Who gave me the answer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nice trial, but yeah, I said with displacement, we are not interested in direction. All that we care about is the distance covered. So yeah, come again. Look at it, eh? Caleb. Caleb, go ahead. Sir, please. Caleb, go ahead. Um, sir, please, 19.5. Exactly, 19.5. We are not interested in negative direct all that we care is the area above plus the area below so 18 plus 1.5 which is 19.5 meters that's it that's it not so 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 difficult but you need to understand Class, any question? If you have any question, ask before we move on to equations of motion. All right. Okay. Since you don't have any question, then I want to clean the board and then continue. We have we have about 28 minutes to end the session. So let's end it, okay, by beginning equations of motion. We have a lot to do, so don't be tired. Once the network is in session, well, let's are you there? Oh. Feedback from once vibrant palette. Angel Ousu, are you there? In fact, I'll begin to mark register. Jojo. Jojo. Okay. Equations. Equations of motion. That's so we have. Please, I can't seem to hear voice of you. Come again. Sir. Please, I can't seem to hear a voice properly. It's breaking. Oh, it's, I think it's a network issue. Okay, occasionally properly, occasionally down. So, but I hope it's better now. So we have sir, looked at, it, sir. Okay, we have looked at graphs of motion. We equally have mathematical equations of motion okay now the equations of motion dwells on one important fact and the fact is that the body must be in a uniform accelerated motion so the body in motion must be in a uniform acceleration for the equation to work. Meaning that if the, 
the motion is not uniformly accelerated. You can't use the equation in solving problems. So equations of motion of motion works or operates on on a uniformly accelerated motion. They, they work on uniformly accelerated motion. Meaning, meaning that if motion is not uniformly accelerated, equations cannot be used. If the motion is not uniformly accelerated, equations cannot be used. Now we've done equations of motion. What is a uniform accelerated motion? What we mean by a uniformly accelerated motion. And let me come to your homes and then call some individuals for their views. Eva, Eva, are you there? Hello, Eva. Okay. <laughs> Since Eva is not responding, then let me have, um, I think, Caleb, hold on. Let me pick somebody else and then come back to me. Josiah. Josiah, are you there? Hey. Okay, Caleb. Jacoba. Caleb, what is uniformly accelerated motion? Say, please, is a motion mm -hmm. where the um, rate of the change of the velocity with the time is constant. Exactly. Exactly. So, in a uniform accelerated motion, the rate of change of velocity with respect to time is constant or or yes i give you another dimension of uniformly accelerated motion can somebody share the other explanation of this i gave to the house rate of change of velocity is constant or 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 a body moves with uniform speed or constant speed within equal time intervals. So body moves with equal speed or constant speed within equal time interval. If you recall the data I gave you, V, T, when t is zero, b is zero. When t is one, that's two. When t is two, four. When t is three, six. When t is four, eight. So body moves with equal speed within equal time interval, meaning that the body is moving. And when you plot a velocity time graph, this is a straight line inclined to the time axis, okay? So that is it with a uniformly accelerated motion. So this is 
the foundation on which the equations of motion we are going to derive works on. So let's begin deriving the equation. Considering a body in a uniformly accelerated motion with initial velocity u final velocity v and covering a distance s within a time interval small t. So when we consider a body in a uniformly accelerated motion with initial velocity u, final velocity v, and covering a distance s within a time interval of t. If we, if we want to find the acceleration of the body, the acceleration of the body into bracket small a, how do we, so if a body is in uniformly accelerated motion, its initial velocity is u, final v, and this change in velocity occur within a time interval t. How do we determine the acceleration a of the body? Yes, class. How do we determine that uniform acceleration of the body? Anybody? Hello, anybody? To help us calculate, yes, Henry. Henry, go ahead. V minus U. Uh -huh. Minus U. Okay. Over so, T. Thank you. So, you see, throughout our discussion, we are saying that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So, delta V over either delta T or the time interval T. So, if you want to determine acceleration, it is the change in velocity. What is the change? The change is always the final velocity minus the initial velocity. This divided by time. Okay, so A is equal to the final velocity is V. Initial velocity is U. The time interval within which the velocity increase is T. Help me make V the subject from what we have here. Help me make V the subject of the relation. Yes. If you are ready, share with us. Okay, Irene. Yeah, please. A T plus U is equal to V. Good. So we have V 
equal to u plus a t. And class, this is the first equation of motion. This is the first equation of motion. U plus A T. Is that okay? Oh, my, my pupil seems to be tired. Is that the case? Are you tired? Class, no, are you? Hey, then let me. Let me feel your vibes. Please, not vibing. You are not vibing. Okay, so that's the first equation of that's the first equation of motion. The second equation of motion. Let's see how average velocity. Average velocity. which we represent as V bar, V with the bar at the top, or V subscript AV. In motion, when we talk about average velocity, it's a measure of how fast a body is moving. So calculate for the average velocity. All that we mean is that we want to determine how fast the body is moving. Okay? So that's the meaning of average velocity. It's a measure of how fast a moving body is. We can measure this how fast, which is the average velocity, in two different ways. If you have two velocities, in an initial one and then a final one. Average, in, in your mathematics lesson, when you are given two values to find the average, how do you determine it? If you are given X and Y and you are asked to find the average, Irene, how would you do that? And um, please X plus Y all over two. Exactly. So if I have two velocities, if I have two velocities, initial one and a final one, and I'm asked to find the average, one way of determining this is initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by two. Another way to find the same thing, both situations would give you the same value. And we apply this in, in the calculation of one of the questions I gave you. If a body moves from a point, accelerates and comes to the final point, I can also determine how fast, which is the average velocity by the total distance covered divided by the total time taken. So the same average velocity is also equal to S over T. But here you must define where, where S equal total distance covered or travel. And T equals total time taking. So for the second and third equation, the moment you understand this concept of average velocity, alpha, you are sorted. You can derive equation two and equation three. Okay, please. Some hands are up. Go ahead with your question. Please, the S 
I thought S is supposed to be displacement, or it can also be distance at some time. Oh, over here, you see, we are only looking at one direction, not changing direction. So we can use displacement and distance, okay, interchangeably because that the direction isn't changing. It's just one distance. Are you okay? Hello, are you okay? Yes, what please. I mean, what I mean is, when a body is in mo, uh, is, is in motion, and its direction is not changing, and it's only in one direction, then we can either use distance or dis displacement, okay? Because over here we are not so much interested in the direction, or even when we are interested, the direction is only either along the positive or along the negative. It's not changing. Are you okay? The reason for which we are using S for distance and displacement over here. And if you recall, I also said that when we are calculating for total distance or displacement and the motion is along one direction, distance and displacement will be the same. Distance covered and displacement will be the same. Please, are you okay? All right, so for equation two and three, the moment you understand that average velocity, which is a measure of how fast a body is moving, is equal to U plus V over two, which is also the same as S over T. In fact, you are you are true. So S over T, which is also equal to U plus V over two. If we make S the subject, S is equal to U plus V over two, the average velocity times time and this is still connected to a changing a changing velocity not a situation of constant velocity there is an initial velocity there is a final velocity all right now let's let's make t the subject in equation one so from okay okay let's substitute v substitute equation one that's equation one let's substitute equation one into and to this equation, I'm calling at star into equation star. Equation one is V is equal to U plus A T. In equation star, wherever you see V, go and put this. So we have S is equal to U plus, I'm seeing V here. So I'm going to put U plus 80. So U plus 80 all divided by two times T. Let's play around this and then make as the subject. We have S is equal to this plus this, 2U plus AT all over 2. So, so the hey, can you see now? So, please, the screen is blue. Hey, 
Is it a general problem or from one end? Class, is the screen blurry from all your ends? No, please. Yes, please. No, please, mine is not. And then, then if you have a blurry screen, please, can you rejoin? So, once you have this, let's divide the numerator by the common denominator 2. It means we have S is equal to 2U over 2. plus a t over two. Still we have the, the two outside multiplying it. So this and this will cancel. And when we multiply through by the two outside the bracket, we have s is equal to u t plus a t squared over two. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second equation of motion. So the second equation of motion is just about understanding average velocity. Average velocity is equal to u, u plus v over two, and it's also equal to total distance over total time taken. And when you substitute equation one into equation two and just play around, you can easily derive equation two. Let's finish up on equation three and then we, we end for today, okay? And for equation two and three, it's all about understanding the average velocity. So quickly, let's finish equation three and go. Still, total average distance is equal to total distance over total time, and it's also equal to u plus v over two. When you multiply through by t, from equation one, make t the subject. Yes. How do we make t the subject in equation one? Callum, uh -huh. how do we make t the subject in equation one? Hey, Callum. Yes, sir. Help me make t the subject from equation one. Um, surface T is going to be equal to V minus U over A. Exactly. So V minus U over A is T. Substitute this T in place of the T here. Well, so from equation star, wherever you see T, put V minus U all on A. Add a num multiply numerator by numerator, then denominator by denominator. Numerator, you have difference of two squared. So V squared minus U squared all on 2A. Cross multiply and make V, that's V squared the subject. Yes, Irene, are you there? Irene, are you there? Yes, please. Uh -huh. Cross yes, multiply please. and help me make V squared the subject. We have gotten to this stage. Cross multiply and help me make V squared the subject.
Irene, are you true? Fair please, so I should make V squared the subject. Exactly. Okay. So mm -hmm. A S A S plus U squared. Or uh -huh. V squared is equal to U squared plus two A S. This is equation three, the third equation of motion. So simple to derive. So, so easy to derive them. Plus, isn't it easy? Let me have a big response. Isn't it uh, easy to derive? Yes, please. So, yes, spend yes, time. Spend time and go over, okay? Just as we've done. And yes. you, can master, you can master it easily. I'll send a video so that if you get if you get lost somewhere, you can always follow. Is that okay? So this is where I draw the curtains on today's meeting. Thanks for your time. Please, whenever you go on YouTube, please subscribe for me and like and then share, okay? I need that badly. Until, I mean, Friday, yes. our next meeting will be on Friday. Until then, please take care of yourselves and bye bye. Yes, bye. 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 Bye.